What's up guys, welcome to the Chess Giants, your boy Solo. Today's video, I'm going to be covering an evergreen chess game between Master Allen playing as white and Grandmaster Verusia Nakobian, top tier GM level player, playing here as black in a blitz game. Now here, Allen starts this thing off by playing knight f3, going to the ready, in which case Nakobian, a very strong player obviously, just goes, okay, I'll take control of the center, but now faces this move of c4 with the ready gambit. He was smart not to capture this pawn on c4, but instead declines it by playing d4 with the really the advanced variation. And now we got some really mainline chess. Okay, we got e3 from white, both sides exchanging off on d4, and now g3. Notice here, white plays g3, Fianchetto's the bishop, and then locks this pawn structure up with two light squared pawns on d3 and c4. Notice white is not just trying to take control of the light squares in the very center of the board on e4 and d5, which is the pawns, but this light squared bishop on g2, right? I mean, this bishop on g2 is much more active than a bishop on e2 would have been, right? So sometimes guys in chess, it's very easy to just go, okay, I got to play bishop e2. I got to castle kingside as quickly as I can. But guys, this bishop on e2 would have been absolutely miserable. Why not just play bishop g2 and have an active minor piece for the rest of this game? So, okay, I mean, a Kobe in response here by playing this move of e5, expanding in the center, giving this pawn on d4 a little bit more support. And here we see white Allen here continuing with castling kingside. And against this move, bishop d6 play the somewhat shocking looking move of b4. Now, if you didn't, you know, if obviously you're not familiar with the opening theory, this move may just seem to give up a pawn. But guys, this is a mainline option at the master and grandmaster level. And here, Akobian could have captured back the pawn on b4. And many of you are probably wondering why couldn't Akobian just get this free pawn? Well, guys, it turns out that it's not free. Okay, now first off, if we take back with the knight, white is able to play this move of rook e1. Notice white has two different threats here. One of them is playing this move of knight takes e5, right? Because white has two attackers. We as black only have one defender. Another threat is this move of knight takes d4 because we can't capture it back at the moment because our pawn on e5 is currently pinned to the king on e8. And here if we play a move like knight c6, which seemingly stops both, all of a sudden white plays this move of knight takes e5 and simply has a much better game because if we take back with the bishop, white removes the defender of that bishop and then simply just, you know, snatches off that bishop on e5 with a check against the king. And if we take back with the knight, White now plays this move of f4, attacking this pinned knight. Notice here, if black, you know, plays a move like castling kingside, for example, white's going to capture back and then fork both the knight and the bishop. So here, black's got to play a move like bishop g4, in which case white has queen d2. Black could also, you know, try to play something like knight g4. But in any case, guys, I mean, this is very awkward for black. White here with the big edge and development activity. And guys, I mean, this knight is simply about to drop. So, okay, I mean, going back to this move of b4, knight takes b4 doesn't win a pawn, right? Because we play rook e1 with two threats in the air. And if we stop both with knight c6, knight takes e5 is still played, and they're going to get that piece back. Now, what about this move of bishop captures on b4? Well, guys, in this case, sure, you know, white can't play this move of rook e1 because black here would simply get the exchange, but we do have knight captures on e5 immediately. Two minor pieces pouncing down on this knight on c6, and here if black decides to take the knight, black is up a full piece, but only for a brief moment because here white has this idea of queen a4 with check. The only way to hang on to this bishop is by playing this move of knight c6, in which case white simply captures back and then wins this bishop on b4, preventing black from even castling. Here, in terms of the mainline theory, I mean, most master GM players go with this move of knight fd7, but I mean, okay, I mean, white just captures back with, you know, taking, you know, taking this pawn, and here the computer actually has a dead even evaluation. Very fascinating line. I mean, here, here black, you know, could take on d3, white then continuing with queen a3, attacking the knight, preventing black from castling. Black's got to be very careful here, right? Because if black just kind of messes around with this knight, all of a sudden a move like rook e1 check is able to be played. I mean, for example, if black just takes that bishop, we have rook e1 check and black's position is resignable, right? So here black's got to play a move like knight 7 to c5, but okay, I mean, white here just continues with knight d2, knight e4, whole idea being, I mean, here white's putting a ton of pressure on c5, and if you ever take on e4, we just take this knight, and yeah, black is up a pawn, but guys, this pawn on d4 is simply not going to be hanging on very long, so obviously that was a very long line, but I just wanted to share a little bit of the opening theory there, and uh, and really why, you know, Kobian didn't decide to take this pawn on b4. It seems free, but it's definitely far from it, so here we see a Kobian instead simply just castle kingside, 
right? And okay, I mean, here Alan has a couple of different options. One of them is playing a move like c5, trying to kick this bishop around. Another one is just this move of a3, which is exactly what we see, obviously, here, guys, opposed to earlier. I mean, if white just, you know, kind of messes around and plays a move like h3, all of a sudden against a move like bishop takes or knight takes, there's not all these knight takes e5 and queen a4 check ideas, right? This king is castled, so now this pawn on b4 needs to be defended at all costs. Okay, I mean, we see this move a3, and now from black h6. Doing a couple of different things. First off, giving this king a little bit of breathing room and also just preventing this bishop from ever coming to g5 and pinning our knight on c6 to that queen. Here white continues with rook e1. You know, I mean, it never hurts to just put your rook on a semi-open file and really just try to, you know, put some pressure on that uh, dark square pawn on e5. Notice that this pawn on e5 ever falls, the pawn on d4 is probably not, is probably going to fall pretty shortly after that, right? So here black needs to be careful, and we see a Cobain do just that with this move of rook e8, right? Preparing for b5 ideas, ready to move this knight without losing that pawn. And now white continues with knight bd2, in which case Cobain plays bishop f5, attacking the pawn on d3, which is currently a big target. But here, okay, I mean, white just defends it. And we now see Cobain, a strong GM player, continue to put the pressure on the queen side with a5. Now here, you know, white has a few different options, c5. White could have played b5, but instead from Allen, we see this little intermediate option of knight h4, right? Whole idea being, I mean, we could take this pawn, but in return, we're just going to lose our bishop on f5. So Cobian runs with this bishop to h7. Still a very active spot. I mean, that's one of those things about bishops, guys. I mean, you could have a bishop all the way down on h7. Still a very active piece. But okay, I mean, Alan throws in that little intermediate move and then plays this move of b5, kicking this knight. Notice there's nowhere for this knight to go while saving this pawn on b7, right? Knight a5 can't be played. And knight d8 can't be played because in chess, we can't take our own pieces, right? So okay, we see this move of knight b8. And now this pawn drops. And now we see this move of rook a7. Now here, Allen really needed to play this move of bishop e4. Here, white is up a pawn. And black here has ideas like knight d7 and knight c5 gaining great counterplay against that pawn on d3. So here, white needs to trade down as quickly as they possibly can. But here we see this move of bishop g2 and then the move of knight e4. Notice here, guys, that it gave a Cobian a little bit of time to develop his pieces. And guys, when you're playing someone that's, you know, 2700 level in terms of their rating, you know, it doesn't take it doesn't take much for them to get a great, great initiative and attacking chances. So just with this little move of knight d7 that he got in, all of a sudden a Cobian is able to capture on e4 twice and then play this move of knight c5, right? Attacking this rook, making it run away, and then playing this move of e4, just breaking this game open. Whole idea being if you want to take back with you know, D takes pawn. We have D3 forking both the queen and the rook. So here white obviously can't do that. The computer recommendation is actually rook takes E4 shockingly. And that just shows you just, you know, just how much trouble really that a white is in here because that just gives us the exchange. That being said, however, um, you know, we see this move of queen B2 from Allen, in which case a Cobian continues with E takes D3 attacking the rook. We now see a trade and white now continuing with queen captures on d4. Now there's a couple of different ways that black could have tried to play this position. Here we see the move of rook d7, which I believe is black's best option. Some may be tempted to play a move here like knight b3, right? I mean, just, you know, trying to fork this queen and the rook. But notice here, guys, if we do this, we do lose this rook on a7. And if we play a move like knight takes a1, we get that rook. But all of a sudden, the move like queen e3 is played. This pawn on d3 isn't going to be going anywhere anytime soon. And white does have two pass pawns on c4 and b5. So if we take this rook, white plays queen e3. And they're, you know, really, you know, reaching a surprisingly playable defensive position, right? Here, black does have this option of bishop c5. Again, a very, you know, really fascinating option that black had here. You know, Kobe and playing knight b3 and bishop c5. And I honestly think that he probably saw this idea. But guys, why complicate things when you don't have to? Now here, let's just say Alan plays a move like queen c7. Black does have the option of playing a move like queen e1 with check and then taking on f2. In which case, okay, I mean, white just continues with king h3. Here at the exact moment, white is up a rook. And okay, I mean, you know, white could, can, you know, black can continue with checking and then trying to snatch that rook off. Um, but, you know, the computer actually recommends this move of knight takes c1. But even then, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, you know, white can play a move like queen c8 with check. And sure, all of a sudden, guys, we are only a couple squares away with this pawn on d3. But at the same time, white is only a couple steps away as well, right? And the big question I have here is obviously I just showed you a huge line, which was, you know, I got I got help from with the computer. 
But really, guys, what I'm trying to show you is that this game gets very complicated very quickly. Why complicate things when you don't have to, right? Why, why give your opponent an attacking chance, a fighting chance for a win if you don't need to do that, right? So going back all the way to this move of queen captures on d4, knight b3, and bishop c5, things get crazy. But what about this just quiet move of rook d7? Knight, knight b3 is still a threat, right? Knight b3 is still a threat in the air. And notice here, I mean, if, if white ever tries to, to stop it with a move like rook b1, we have queen e1 check ideas ready to go. And if, you know, white ever plays a move like queen c3, we have knight e4. Just to show you really quickly, um, in the game we see this move of bishop e3 from Allen. But if white does try to play a move here, such as rook b1, um, we actually, again, we have this idea of queen e1 with check. And then the shocking tactical idea, very nice find, of d2. Right. And, and notice here, guys, I mean, I mean, why it's just losing this position. If you take with the bishop, we win the rook. And if you take with the queen, the whole idea here is that we're not going to somehow, you know, trade off this queen and then get the rook in, in this fashion. But instead, just kind of slide the queen back a few squares, play queen e4 with check, and this rook is simply going to fall. So again, guys, with this move of rook b1, throw in a check, play d2. Whole idea being, guys, I mean, we're going to win that rook, you know, just kind of horizontally by capturing it off. Or we're also realizing that we are opening up this check idea. And, that, you know, that's something that I recommend you guys think about in your games. It's like, okay, in this position, if I were black, you know, what piece could I potentially not even want, right? If, if, if this pawn just kind of disappeared off the board for a second, um, what could I do here, right? And, and the answer is that you have potential queen e4 check ideas. So why not distract this queen? And then just play queen e4 and win that rook, right? So, okay, I mean, going back to this move of, uh, of rook d7, um, there's a lot of different moves that white has here, but a lot of them, you know, fall into trouble very quickly. We see this move of bishop e3 from Allen trying to prevent any kind of queen e1 ideas, but here black just continues with knight b3, right? Again, here we have a fork, and this rook is no longer on a7. Here, black making the game very simple for themselves. We got queen c3, in which case black just captures off that rook, and now plays queen e4, right? When you can, why not centralize your queen and get it more active, guys? In chess, every single move, be asking ourselves, how can I improve the positioning of my pieces? And guys, this queen on e8 wasn't a bad piece, but it's much, much stronger on e4, right? Attacking the pawn on c4, and just a ton of key light squares here from white we see this move of queen c1 in which case a cobian really just starts to expand on the king side with g5 kicking that knight back to a very awkward spot and now playing rook c7 right preventing any kind of c5 counterplay and really just winning this pawn on c4 the very next move here allen plays queen b2 but after playing this realizes that he ran out of time so here a cobian with the win on on both the clock and the board Notice here, guys, I mean, it, it, let's just say Alan had more time. I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that Kobe would have went on to win this thing very easily. In fact, here he could just play a move like rook c2, right, attacking this queen. Whole idea being, I mean, if, if white here tries to, you know, let's just say play something like queen b1, all of a sudden we have queen d5 supporting this d2 push. And if b7, you know, actually, according to the computer, the best move is still d2. But I, I, I again, I, I harp on this again and again in a lot of my videos, guys. Why play the technically correct move? If you can just play an easier one, right? And if you plug this into the computer, it's going to give you about a minus eight advantage for black. If you play d2, whole idea being if you take with the bishop, we win that minor piece. If you, you know, if you take the rook on c2, we play, you know, d1 equals queen, and all of a sudden we have two queens on the board. But guys, you know, why not just get a minus seven advantage by just playing bishop b8, right? Just literally getting rid of any any ideas white has about promoting to a queen, and then just continuing with d2 the very next move. Right, so okay, I mean, Black would have went on to win this game. A very nice game from Verusian Akobi. And again, going back to one of the key moments here, um, I, I think really, um, you know, we got Bishop h7, here White expanding, taking on b7. I think here in a position like this, guys, White needs to be very quick, especially against someone of Akobi's caliber, to trade off as quickly as they possibly can. Bishop e4 was definitely the move here. You can't give Black too much time to get an active game here. And again, white here barely slips up. I mean, just, you know, just one move difference, still trying to trade off pieces. And the pieces do fall off the board, but the big difference is that now there's not a knight on b8, but a knight on d7. And all of a sudden, knight c5 and e4 comes into the board. 
And um, okay, I mean, Akobian just kind of goes on to win this game in pretty easy fashion. Thanks for watching today's video and special thanks to everyone who has become a patron. My goal is to make this chess thing go full time and y'all are helping me create better test content and drop it more often. If you'd like to check out my chess openings playlist as a whole, click that learn to play link to the left. And if you want to see my top 10 chess openings for black against the move of D4, click that video to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.